Dr. Noel here with the gem of the week. Um, one of the things that's been on my mind for so many years, uh, having studied um, functional neurology, neuro rehab, you know, for so long, is the power of the mind. What's on your mind eventually becomes your action, right? So we've heard that before. What you think becomes what you say and becomes what you do and that becomes your destiny. Well, we can use that therapeutically to our advantage, or we could use it uh, to our disadvantage, depending on what's on our mind. And there's actually quite a bit of, of articles, a lot of studies on this, so it's not necessarily a new concept. Um, there's a couple articles here that I, that I printed out, and I thought the information in here could be so beneficial. And in a nutshell, what you need, like the take home point here is that you may not be able to do a particular function. You know, there may be something that you want to do physically that for whatever reason, injury or other, you're not able to accomplish. If in your mind, you visualize yourself being able to carry out those functions. So if in your mind, you can see yourself doing something that you know physically you may not be able to do, um, you, it will help your body actually achieve that function. Okay, so here are the, some of the articles. One uh, that I looked at that I thought was, was pretty good, they basically took um, two groups and uh, basically had immobilized a particular part of their arm. And so when you immobilize an area of your body and you don't use the muscles, it doesn't take long for the muscles to start to break down and for weakness to start setting in. I mean, we're talking like just a few days. And in this case, they had one group where they were immobilized and they did nothing, right? They just, they were, they just didn't use that part of their body. They didn't think about using it. But then the other group did mental imagery, meaning they actually in their mind would do activities using the immobilized part of their body. And the comparison was that they were able to maintain a really high level of strength compared to the other group who had significant decrease in strength, okay? So this next article looked at um, 600, over 600, 639 articles. And it's, this is an article review. So they look at a whole bunch of articles and they basically extract all the information from those articles and write one article that kind of summarizes what does mental imagery do and how, uh, like does it work, is it beneficial, that sort of thing. So they looked at all those articles and then out of those 639, they picked out 28 that they thought were some of the best uh, written articles. And then they refined that down to only six. And out of those six articles, what they were looking at, because they had to fit the criteria they're looking for, and what they're looking for is, what is the effectiveness of mental imagery for improving strength in an asymptomatic population? So you're taking people that don't have symptoms and that's your, that's your, your study group. And so what we're looking for here is if we've got a physical limit, limitations, right? So we, when we know that we do active muscular contraction, if there is an injury or there's pain, we may not be able to actually do it. Um, what is the difference if we take a group that is not symptomatic, what is the difference between a group that does active activity and a group that does it mentally? And of course, a group that doesn't, that doesn't do it at all. And so what the conclusion um, is, is saying that uh, mental imagery can increase strength greater than the control group, but less than the practice group. So we have three groups. We have a group that's act actively doing the exercise, a group that's doing it in their head, and a group that's not doing either one. And what we're finding is if you do an exercise in your mind, like you actually are going through every single step and motion in your head, your strength level will go up compared to the group that's not doing anything. And that's amazing because we can use that, 
right? So if you're in a situation where you're not capable of achieving a certain function, if you play it out in your head, if you imagine the step-by-step -step process in the same amount of time that it might take to, to do it in reality, your strength will increase, your motion will increase, your function will increase. And that's really what we're saying. Now, what was neat about this article is that they kind of also broke it down into these are the particular muscle groups that we're looking at. And what they found is, you know, they looked at like the fifth finger uh, strength, and you might find that that's odd, like why would we pick the little pinky? Um, they looked at quads, uh, elbow flexors, so those are your biceps. They looked at the ankle, plantar and dorsiflexion, so basically ankle moving up and down. And what they found is that the strength gains were, were um, convincing in all those areas except for the bicep. And the thought here is that it's likely that the muscles that can have the greatest gain from mental imagery are the muscle groups that have the largest representation in the brain. And yes, the pinky is one of them. When you look at what we call the homunculus, which is the map of the body in the brain, um, you'll see that the hand is massive, the face is huge, and they're actually side by side. So we could use that too therapeutically, but I don't want to diverge too much. The pinky has a very large representation. The fingers have a large representation in the brain, more so than the bicep. But the ankles are also really important. So the legs, the feet, the feet have a huge representation. And part of the reason for that is because the ankle control has everything to do with balance, right? You need that for balance. There are other articles that actually looked at balance, not just strength, but also balance. And again, mental imagery was so beneficial in improving balance as well as strength. So use that to your advantage. Use mental imagery for yourself. See yourself moving and doing things without pain, with greater function, as opposed to contaminating your mind and seeing yourself I can't do that because it causes pain. I can't do that because I'm too weak. I can't do, right? That kind of self-talk makes it much worse. Um, you can recognize that there's a problem, but then see yourself performing without it, and that will become your new reality.